One of the things that the First World War presented to the medical establishment here in Britain when the soldiers returned was um, a depth and scale of facial injury that hadn't been seen before. Shrapnel caused um, tearing and jagged edges in wounding which um, presented a particular challenge because of infection. Um, shrapnel dragged in soil and dirt from the trenches um, into the wounds and um, infection was one of the biggest challenges um, that doctors faced afterwards. Surgeon Howard Gillies established uh, an establishment to deal solely with facial injury at Sidcup. Um, and the, the teams there were faced with a whole new um, range of injuries and needed to provide surgical innovation on a, on a quite a rapid um, scale. They devised a method where living tissue was attached to the face from the neck and the chest um, and the, the fact of living tissue being attached to the face as a graft meant that infection was mitigated drastically uh, and patients could be kept alive and could be kept alive in a relatively well state and it's something that's gone on to influence us right to today with plastic surgery and, and the, the rise of facial reconstructive surgery that's happened in the 20th century since. We don't have in our collection an object which so significantly represents that moment of plastic surgery advent that happened in the First World War. Um, so we partnered with the Royal College of Surgeons to have a look at their collection and think about how we could interpret here in the museum some of that story. We chose this uh, wax teaching aid and worked with Anishin, the production company, um, over the last couple of years to, to really get a facsimile version uh, that we can use here at the museum. Um, because the uh, technology is still in development, we went back and forth on um, scanning, rescanning, getting the colour values really correct with Anishin um, and have produced a really wonderful facsimile version of the Royal College of Surgeons teaching model. This represents for us another step on our transformative journey and we're really looking forward to seeing it on display when the museum opens in spring 2017.